Here we're told that f of x is x plus sine x, and we're told to find the derivative of f inverse at x equals zero. And this is actually really, really easy. You can say at x equals zero, at that x value, the function f obviously has a slope of two. Okay, now how do I know that? Well, you can you might be able to picture the function in your head, but if not, the derivative of this is going to be one plus cosine x. And that's pretty easy because cosine of zero is one, so we just have one plus one is two. So if you can't picture the graph in your mind and see that it has a slope of two, you can differentiate that pretty easily. I just did it in my head there. One plus cosine x and evaluating that at x equals zero gives you a slope of two. So if f has a slope of two, then the slope of its inverse must be the reciprocal of that. So I'll just write that. So the slope of f inverse must be one half. And that's it, you're done, one half. Now, if you can't see it that easily, you can apply the standard procedure to find the inverse and differentiate that. And I'll show you that, and, and of course we should get an answer of one half. Let's see how it works out. So if you don't like this approach, which I think is the intuitive approach, picturing the graph, uh, you can um, just work it out. So here's your other option. Y is x plus sine x, so switch x and y, and you get x is y plus sine y. And then differentiate this implicitly. So I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So the left side I just get 1. On the right side I'll differentiate term by term, and that's y primed plus the derivative of sine here is cosine, so this is cosine y times y primed by the chain rule. Now we need to solve this for y primed. So on the right, let's factor out a y primed, and we have one plus cosine y as the other factor. So y primed is equal to one over one plus cosine y. Now I'll continue my reasoning up here. At x equals zero, this is the, the the position that we're concerned with. At x equals zero, y also equals zero. You can see that zero plus sine of zero is zero. So at x equals zero, y is equal to zero. So y primed at zero is just one over one plus the cosine of zero. In other words, I took my original function, I took this known x value, evaluated y, right there, and I have my value to plug in for y right down there, it just came out to zero. And cosine of zero is one. So this is one over one plus one, which is a half, which is what we found by that method also. And in this one we're given y is the inverse tangent of three over should say 3 over x, y is the inverse tangent of 3 over x, find y primed. Okay, well what we need is the derivative of this, and that's an inverse tangent. And remember that the derivative of the inverse tangent function is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we're going to apply this concept to this problem, but we have an inner function here, so the chain rule will apply. So with the function we're given here, y primed is going to be 1 over 1 plus this squared. So it's going to be 3 over x squared. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of 3 over x. 3 over x is the same thing as 3x to the negative 1. So the derivative of that is going to be negative 3 times x to the negative 2. So this is going to end up being a negative 3 up top over 
our denominator here, which is 1 plus, I'm going to write this as 9 over x squared. And this x to the negative 2 right here can be an x to the positive 2 in the denominator. And so that simplifies. Negative 3, if we distribute this x squared across those two terms, we get x squared plus 9. And that's probably the simplest way to write it. Negative 3 over x squared plus 9.